Well, tonight uh, we have. This is a wireless mic that streams directly into my hearing. Aid. We have Doug Bach as uh, who is going to give us a short presentation. He actually joined uh, this organization in 1973. He has been around. Are you the oldest person still a member? He's not the oldest person at all. No, I mean, the person who's been a member the longest? Yes. Okay, cool. Living history of this organization, this August organization. Um, he uh, was awarded a lifetime membership back in 2002. There aren't very many people who have been awarded that. Um, he's also been a member of about a half a dozen other astronomy clubs over the years. Uh, he has been the president of this club and held some of the other offices in this club. Um, and he was uh, an engineer at Ford Motor Company until he retired a little over a year ago. Um, if he can demonstrate his computer expertise tonight, Boom. Uh, computer software, I think, is his, hmm? his forte, uh, or one of his fortes. He's going to be talking to us tonight about chasing comets. There you go. I hope. Yep. So, uh, 73 was when I joined the club, it was March or April of 1973, and it just so happened that year, it was a comment that I got very interested in at the age of 17. Actually, I was 16 at that time. Kamakote, which most people said it was a, a bus, but I actually followed it through my, the next six months with one of my telescopes that I, I built it uh, at that time. So I've been kind of hunting comments for a long time. And uh, this portfolio here is just about, I don't know, half of the comets that I've either visually seen or photographed. Most of these in, in this picture are uh, comets that I've taken pictures of in the last three years of my new system. And that's one of the things I'd like to do is go out and capture comets. I've actually photographed 19 unique comets in the last three years. Um, and there's a lot more I could go after, which are different, like 15. 15th or 18th magnitude comets. So get into that range, it takes a little more time. But you can see in this portfolio here that um, it's, a, it's a adventure to do that and sometimes a challenge because you have to be able to track on the comet either digitally or analog. When I say that, you can stack these comet images on the core of the comet in software or you can actually track on the comet core or you can use the, what they call the differential um, movement of the comet relative to the stars, which is RA and DEC data that's provided by the Minor Planet Center. So I just went through the little history, over 30 comets that I've, I've either visually or um, photographed. Anyhow, uh, so since 2017 I've actually photographed 19 comets, but I've taken images of each of those multiple nights, so I've got a lot of data. Um, and I'm going to talk about the uh, equipment that I use and then some details about this one comment that you, he just put in the, in the, um, in the uh, observing uh, report. That's to C2017T2, which is something I've been following since October. So this is the equipment I have. Um, I have a roll-off roof in the backyard. That's a 10 by 10 roll-off roof and I have a 10-inch uh, uh, Richie Creighton telescope. Uh, with a ZWO camera and a uh, Lost 90 G11 mount. And I can actually open this up, power it up, go back in the house and run it from the house so that I can use it clear nights that are cold or clear nights that have mosquitoes. So one of my purposes of doing that was to automate a system so I could do what I'm doing. And I can actually start it up in the evening and go to bed and let it run all night on non transient objects. I can't let it run in its own, you know, doing comets or asteroids, but things like galaxies and nebulas uh, and clusters, I can let it run. 
So, Comet um, 217, 2017 T2, which is discovered by PanStars, which is an observatory that uh, does scanning for, for uh, comets. This is its orbit relative to our position in, the, in our solar system. And it's a periodic, so it comes back. Uh, and this is a, a map of where it's going to be in the sky over the next three, four, or five months. Right now, it's off to the, to the right over here on the very edge. Tonight's uh, February 3rd. So that position is right at the tail of that green curve. So that's where it's at right now. It just went by the uh, double cluster in Perseus, which I have uh, one shot of my wife, uh, wider field, uh, which was also uh, displayed earlier. I'm using a 200 millimeter lens. But anyways, it's going to be at perihelion on May 4th, which is about in the middle of Camelo Pardis. And it will be uh, accessible, not necessarily bright enough, but it will be accessible to uh, the telescopes and if you get clear nights to go out and watch for it from now through most of the summer. This is the data I've collected on this particular comet. Uh, I record all the nights that I take data, number of frames that I take, how long the exposures were, uh, what gain I use, the temperature of the camera, and what camera I use. So these are all the nights since October that I've taken pictures of this uh, comet. And I do this for all my objects. I've got close to 500 entries of data collection uh, over the last three years of all the various things I've been taking pictures of. So I collect it all so I can go back and reference how I did one. For example, the uh, Horsehead Nebula that I did a year and a half ago, I did it again just a few weeks ago uh, using some better techniques than I had a year and a half ago. Uh, and I went back and found the data on the on the, on the horse set that I did pass then, and I used those as reference points for how I would take exposures this month, as an example. And the reason some of the exposures, um, I've changed them uh, between 30 seconds and two minutes is, if I expose too long on these comets, just like on galaxies, the cores get saturated. So I shorten them up, either dropping the gain down or dropping the exposure time so that the core itself is not saturated just like I do on the galaxy. In fact, that M100 shot, um, the gas actually looks great, but I had to back off the processing in order to get that, that supernova to pop out so you could see it. So here's uh, some photographs of this comet over time. Uh, whereas the last one here in the lower right is um, uh, the, 20, or the 19th of this last month. As you can see, it gets brighter as time goes on. Yeah, this is the one from the 19th. Uh, this is taken through the 10 inch. And then here's one from the 21st, two nights later. And the sh shot that he had up here was, uh, I used, I have a piggyback on top of my, my telescope was a Canon T3i um, DSLR. And I have a zoom lens. I have multiple lenses, anywhere from 10 millimeter all the way to 300 millimeter. This image was taken with a 200 millimeter lens and then I cropped it just to the area of interest. Those, that's the double cluster on the right and then the comments pointed out with the, uh, the yellow arrows. barrels. And this is before it got to the cluster. Unfortunately, I have not had a clear sky when it started going past and I knew that was probably going to be a problem. 26th and 27th was the closest and it wasn't clear. This was back on the 20th or on the 19th. So this is kind of where it's at right now. And uh, you have Cassiopeia and Perseus. It's in the general area. But if you want to find the data, you can go to the, um, the URL called the, the, live, uh, the skylive.com and just look up this object, or you can look up any object you want, and it'll give you data on that. So I have a time lapse, real quick one. I'm going to play for you this comment on two, two separate nights. And I have to actually pull that up because it doesn't play out of this process.
So you can see it moving there? Yeah. And then you're going to see the sky flash. I was actually shooting through some clouds. The next one's even, even more dramatic with clouds. I go after it even you get, if I get two hours of clear and clouds roll in and I can still collect data, I do it on these, on these things. So here's the, here it is on the next night I took. And then the flashing is the background cloud cover that's coming through. You'll see it also in my wide field. How, how long is this? Cool. Uh, over a uh, real time, about an hour. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So there were, uh, those were headlights going through too? No, you were seeing yeah. headlights. Oh wow! This is that's with my 10 millimeter lens piggyback on the on the system. So you know, if I see something going on with my guide star or the uh, background sky, I'll take a snapshot with that 10 millimeter and see if there's clouds. But I also sometimes will run it for a time lapse like that. <clears throat> So the only thing I have left is um, a five. These questions. Uh, most comments appear greenish in photos. Can you explain the green hue? That's usually the chemical composition of it uh, on the outgassing. I don't remember if that's the oxygen or what it is. Cyanogen. 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 Whatever it is. I don't remember. Um, Actually, I have a couple of them that are in the bluish range. My time up? No, actually, you've got uh, 10 more minutes if you want to. Yeah, show us some more. You told me 15 minutes. Wow, but we got to this point early. Yeah, okay. we, had, we had a tight business meeting today. Uh, so, well, any more questions on this? Because I do have other material. Looks like we do. <laughs> uh, um, you first, yep. Have you or any of your close friends discovered uh, any comments? And if so, I have not personally, and I don't remember. Uh, actually, I do know somebody that did discover it. She lives up in the, the Gaylord area. Um, can't remember his last name right now. But anyhow, normally the procedure is you got document uh, exact position and time on multiple nights if you can. And you, t you have a, if you remember the Minor Planet Center, Portfolio people, you know, you belong to it in, in the terms of uh, an official report. They have a form that you can fill out and give a report to them, and then they they broadcast it around the world and have other people verify. That's how it works. In fact, if I get further and further into doing the astrometry with this and some of the photometry of the asteroids, I've got I've got a nice video of uh, of an asteroid. Maybe I'll play that for you. Yeah, do um, that. I, I will. I'm going to probably. Uh, put in for an observatory code um, so that I can uh, report uh, asteroids. Yeah? Uh, are there any, any, any other uh, high-profile conjunctions with this comet with any other CAA or space objects? Um, I'd have to look forward on that okay. in time. I usually go through the sky software and see where it's going to go. Yeah. I haven't gone any further than the Delta cluster. I got really excited about that yeah. about, about three weeks ago. I says, oh, I can't wait. And I said, like, oh, I'm in Michigan. I'll never get, to, I'll never get the opportunity. <laughs> but some people that did around the country did get some nice shots of the real tools. Yeah, John or Jonathan. Uh, so I was just going to ask. You haven't gotten the name of Adam, but do you have anything named after you? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I do. I have an asteroid name after after me, and uh, so is my wife, actually. <laughs> Uh, compliments of uh, Rick Hill, who used to work on the Catalina Sky Survey. So that showed up in my email one day. And I says, "Oh, oh, that's cool." Have you mentioned that asteroid? I have tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's 19.5 magnitude, <laughs> and, and it doesn't move very fast. <laughs> so it's one of those where I'm going to have to take that part of the sky over, you know, this year and the next year and see if there's any. Before all that wow. I think I can get to 19th magnitude. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not my backyard, but probably a big one. So this guy started. Very good. Any other questions for Doug? Oh, I'm uh, six, seven miles south of Sentinel. 
You know where that is? Yeah. North of Brighton? I'm out in the country. I bought a piece of land in 1983 and built a house out there. For this purpose, actually. And <laughs> All right. Is he going to show us the asteroid? Yes, please show us the uh, asteroid video, Doug. USB stick. USB stick. Lights. Uh, these are all my time lapse videos. Let's see, let's try uh, this one. Again, shooting through clouds. <laughs> Michigan, yeah. Jeez. Now I'm tracking on the asteroid itself. That's why the sky's moving. Do you know what it's, the magnitude of the asteroid is? Um, this one, I think, was about. No, it's not. I, I better not uh, speculate. I don't remember. This was the cloud cover I was flying through in, in October. That I was I actually took that asteroid. Could you get a rotation of it as it? No, it's no. it's stellar. There's no size to it with my little t with a little ten inch. Well, you can get reflection. You know, can change in brightness, right? You know what? I I have, I have not even looked at it that close. I suppose I could could have done that. Um, By the way, Doug is a reason to go on Facebook. He's got a page that's just fabulous. Yes, feel free to promote your uh, page, Doug. Mm -hmm. I'll promote it for him. He's. It's fabulous. You, you, it's cross. worth it to go on Facebook just because of that. No one across the observatory is the Facebook page. That's the page, yeah. That's where I do, I do most of my work. And um, there's a group, a Boone Hill group, for people to post stuff as well. Anything on YouTube? Well, uh, yeah, actually, I have a YouTube channel. That's where all my time lapses are. And uh, oh, that's the other thing I do. When I when I get online, I, I open up the observatory. I um, I also broadcast on YouTube live, so it's a, you can always come there and just watch what we're doing, what I'm doing. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Doug Mark, uh, you'll get a notification when I go live in the in the oh. email. Cool. So that's something you might want to consider. Uh, I'm trying to find that one. That's, Florence, that's what I want, Florence. Do you sort by date, would that help? Yeah. I don't know why I don't have that on the top. Let's sort by date here. <coughs> I'm trying to find my Florence one. That one's always really cool. I do. Uh, I also do wide field time lapse of uh, the entire, you know, big chunk of sky, which is a lot of what these are. But um, oh, yeah. I don't see my I don't see my Florence asteroid here. If you find it, oh, here it is. Here it is. I got it. That's because it was two and a half years ago. I think this one's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to show you this one. This one I'm tracking on the asteroid, uh, Florence. This is back in September 2017. The first segment I'm tracking on it. The second segment I'm tracking on the stars. Just to give you an idea of the two ways of doing it. Yeah, abruptly got darker. <clears throat> yeah, I changed my exposure time. And the jumps are because I had to um, reacquire. Because I was I was actually tracking on um, using the the uh, relative tracking rates, and I had to reacquire a new guide star to do that. Now I don't have to do that now because I got a bigger uh, bigger chip now for the uh, guider. So this one I'm just guiding on the stars and, and the asteroids is moving through. And this is. Uh, over a four-hour period, and, and this is a 
field of view on this is 40 arc minutes on the horizontal and 27 arc minutes on the vertical. So it's a decent size, it's a little less than the size of the moon vertically. So you can see over four hours, it moved quite, it's moving, it's moving quite a bit. Yeah, if you're I watching see. it in, in real time, does it appear to move at all? I mean, if you watch it for five minutes? Or yes, or yes. Or? Yeah, that one, yes. In fact, even, uh, even C, uh, 2017 T2, it's not moving real fast, but if I take exposure, I can see it as each exposure. I zoom in a little bit, I can see that it's moving. And that's why I try to take short exposure so that core doesn't um, spread, turn into a line. <clears throat> what, what distance are some of those things at? Um, millionth of a million miles, multiple AUs. I mean, the closest that uh, T2 is going to get, I think, is one and a half AUs. So it's a little ways out there, 150 million miles. <clears throat> Okay, anything else? Is that good? That's great. All right. That's part of the fun I've been having for the last three years. Uh, uh, very interesting.